a passionate instigator and dynamic problem solver. Dr. Kevin Ross Emery, the host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show, will be taking you outside the box, behind the curtain, and identifying the load of BS we are fed every day. And now, Dr. Kevin. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show here on Own Time, where we're going to where we're changing the world, wait for it, one ohm at a time. This week on the Dr. Kevin Show, um, we're going to bring on my uh, guest. I'm going to do a little introduction for her. We're going to do a little, let her do a little introduction for herself. But I do, before we even bring her on, I want to remind you, this is a live call-in show. So if you're listening to this at 6 p.m. on Thursday night, uh, then you're listening to it live, and you can call in at 202-570-7057. That's 202-570-7057. And when you call in, you can ask whatever questions you want of tonight's guest, of myself, share. We only ask that you be respectful. That's the only requirement. Now, tonight's guest for, our, for the Dr. Kevin Show is Lana Louise. She is an international psychic medium, author, teacher, and a national certified clinical hypnotist under the National Guild. Lana travels across the country to teach and do gallery demonstrations. She has appeared in a variety of media, including radio and TV, and shared her three death experiences. I say three times is a charm, but I guess not. (laughs) Uh, She has supported others in their spiritual development uh, and we are going to be talking spiritual development, and I, I am personally familiar with Miss Lana, and I'm thrilled that she is here. Lana, welcome. Oh, thank you, Dr. Kevin. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I love speaking to you. It's not often enough. <laughs> ah. So, first of all, I'd like to, I wanted to introduce you first, but I would like to take a, a moment, and I would like everybody to take a moment of silence. And I would like to offer a blessing to Queen Elizabeth, who has just passed uh, and this afternoon. And I, we, we send our, our sympathies and we send our good energies and our love to her and her family and all of her beloved subjects. Uh, she was certainly a... Uh, a woman of the 20th and into the 21st century uh, that was well-respected, well-loved, um, and lived in, as I've never heard anybody say anything other than she lived in the integrity of who she was. And so we do want to take a minute, and we're just going to do just a moment of silence um, to respect. She had over seven decades as the queen, She was 96 when she passed, Uh, and I know that she is happy to be done with her duties. So if we can just take a moment and say, in whatever form we say it, a quick prayer for her and the royal family. I'd like to do that now, and then we will get into it with Lena Louise. So I want to thank you for sharing that moment of silence with us here on the Dr. Kevin Show, uh, out of respect for Queen Elizabeth. So I'm going to actually start. I know we want to talk about spiritual development, but I'm just curious. I mean, to me, she, I, I felt like in many ways uh, she, was the, she was a role model of what it was to be, a, to be a strong, powerful woman in her own way. But since I'm not a strong, powerful woman in this lifetime, uh, I was wondering, uh, what did you think of Queen Elizabeth, Lana? What were your impressions of her? I I mean, what an incredible life she has had, but not so much as what she gave back and how she spoke and she walked in her grace and she was very proud um, of the country, of her upbringing and her family. And she, I mean, there's almost not enough for us on on this planet to even represent her. And people like a very sad understanding, right, when we lose loved ones. And, but 
I mean, what a life, 96 years old, and she changed so much. She changed the world. She helped her country. I thought she was absolutely, she still is. She will go on living forever. Um, incredible amount of work, organizations, very, very close to her family, her children, her grandchildren, and her great-grandchildren. And she always tried to keep that balance. Um, not just in the public eye, but even within her own home, within her own family. So I, I thought she was an incredible person of stature on, on absolutely on this planet. I, I think she was absolutely incredible. And, you know, I, I think that one of the things that I find is, you know, she was 96 and uh, I mean, she had her trials and tribulations like we all did, and she was just a human in a form doing the best she could with what she had. And I'm sure she had moments she would have liked to have changed in her history, as we all do. But oh, yeah. She was a woman of grace. Right. And she represented an era that I feel is almost dead today, an era of, like, respect and yeah. civil exchanges though she didn't yeah. have to do technically she didn't have to do politics which is you know the pig sty of humanity uh, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term like you can't get into it without rolling in the mud a little um yeah. but you know the the i feel like her death is almost the signal of an end of an error and I can't right. tell you that I particularly like the era that's replacing it. Oh. Yeah, you know, you know, that's so funny because, you know, like even my grandparents, like very old fashioned and, you know, what they seen and what they went through the years of the depression and coming to this country and having their hands and all they had is their hands to work and their hearts to give their love and everybody looked out for each other. Um, like you said, things do change, and, you know, and different um, people change. That's one thing will always happen, change, change, uh, change, 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 for sure, whether we like it or not. And I think when you say a different era, it is, it's kind of like, it's sad, it's heartwarming, but like you said, like that's a whole nother part that will never repeat again in this lifetime that I'll ever see, that maybe you'll never see, right? But all we can do is hope for a greater world and hope for better peace in this world. Um, I'm hoping I can see it before I pass myself into the spirit world, but um, it's so different. It's just so different. I mean, things that my grandparents taught us and how we were raised in different beliefs and, you know, different things and different healing um and even spirituality or whatever you want to call it everything's different but it is a very very different time in our lives um she was absolutely stunning significant presence on this earth around the world not just in her country it was around the world um and she did like you like i said and like you said she carried herself with grace no matter what. Um, absolutely. So I completely agree with you. It's different. It's sad, but it's different. So I just try to kind of hold on to those beautiful moments. So all of that being said, I'm going to sound like I'm taking a big U-turn here. Oh, no, that's okay. And, and, and I'm going to say that I am also one who does not romanticize the 50s or the 40s or the 60s or the 70s. That her presence absolutely represented a a kind of grace uh, that I feel like we have lost on the world stage um, in so many ways. On the other hand, she ruled England in dark times. And I know oh, yeah. that she did a lot of good work, but, you know... It was, you know, there was still, there was still a lot of bigotry and hatred, and there was uh, a lot of bullying, and there was a lot of really still ingrained 
old boys club stuff and white supremacy stuff that 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 was part of England and is still today to, to a lesser degree. But even as we learn, lose some of that grace, and I hate to see it go, right. I think we have a much more honest world today on one hand and a much more dishonest world on the other. It used to be that you would politely say and then, you know, be two-faced, talk behind people's back or mumble yeah. or whatever and stuff like that. But you, you tried to be a little bit more graceful on the, on the surface. And now people are showing their ugly face. And well, I don't I mind people it. showing their ugly face, but I, I, they, they, it's the lying. It's the, it's the extraordinary amount of lying in almost a, almost a pathological way that we're expected to just swallow. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What were you going to no, say? No, I, I agree. But you know what? I mean, I don't live in rainbows and skittles, okay? We live in the real world. I absolutely know what's going on. I already know what I've been through in my life. I wasn't there in her era for what I've seen. I don't live in that country, but everything is energy. So we all feel things. And how we were raised, like you said, that grace pot. But before it was like, you, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. And you, you know, shut your mouth. That's it. We weren't taught to feel. We weren't taught to get in touch with our emotions. We were not taught to speak our truth or what we felt. So I think, of course, it's going to be loud and proud now after all these years of being suffocated. So your truth might be somebody else's truth or lies or vice versa. I just think we have a lot of change, a lot of transformation. There is a part of that old school that I very much miss. Um, but I know, like when you say the uglies, yeah, sometimes it can be really ugly. You know, I mean, that's just people in general. Um, I just think it's a whole world. One affects the other. It's not just UK. It's not just the United States. It's everything. And hopefully, someday when I'm here on this earth, we'll all kind of get our crap together, speaking our truth in a kinder, more compassionate way, and, and kind of uphold each other. But of course, things have to be ripped down. And, you know, it's kind of weird that you're saying this. I'm I'm praying that the country in the UK will probably really uphold. I mean, you have more of a modernized now with the grandchildren uh, taking over eventually, even when Prince uh, King Charles passes and stuff. So, um, you know, I, I think more modernized, you know, there is old school, there is old rules and stuff and things need to be broken. But some of those things that need to be broken need to be healed first before they become broken. Do you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I think that the healing of them, and of course, I always like to say healing means to make whole. And so within the healing of them is the breaking of them. Right. Like right. They're, they're entwined. One, one leads to the other. Uh, because what we need to break is the part of it that no longer serves or perhaps never did, no longer works, perhaps never did that, that thing. And, you know, we look at this time and the thing that concerns me the most, or one of the things that concerns me the most is the out of touchness that large swaths of people around the world have with what knowing what the truth is. And, what, and what, how, what would that be to you? I don't understand the question. Well, it's not really a question. It was more of a statement. But, oh, okay. you know, the, the people that have all the evidence in the world that somebody is lying and yet cannot see it as a lie. Take it as a truth. I think the delusion, I think we're at a a peak of 
self-delusion. And, you know, and we have an old world order dying. Right. And, you know, I think it was about a year, a year and a half ago when I came out of retirement, so to speak, from being a full body trans channel. And, um, you know, and I did an evening of channeling because I was asked to by my channels. And we did record it. It is available if people are interested. It's at WeiQiUniversity.com. You can go and see it there. But it is an evening of me channeling. And I channeled Hecate, uh, which I, I'd never channeled before. But she talked about these ugly times because we're seeing the death of the patriarchy, which has been around for 2,000 years. Right. And, that, and when people see a world order die, that even if it doesn't serve them, was familiar and comfortable, they can go to great extents to not see the truth of what's really happening. And, Absolutely. you know, and you see it, you know, yeah, you, you see it in things like people, you know, people who walk, they, they claim, I'm going to say it this way, they claim they walk the Christian path, and yet ignore everything that Christ said and twist everything to bully people like so self-delusional. Mm. And I think that it's, it's, a, it's at a level of self-delusion where it is this fear of the dying of the old world order. Right. I, 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 I totally agree on that. I totally agree on that. But you know, um, it's just like, put it this way. Okay. So I'm Italian. Obviously everything has to do with food. So put it this way, say your grandmother and my grandmother, they taught us how to make sauce, okay, or gravy, however you want to make it. And if you didn't have the right ingredients, oh, it was going to be bad, you know, and that's what we believed. That's what we believed. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I didn't have this, I didn't have that, or if I don't do this and I didn't do that, it wasn't right. It wasn't perfect. It's going to be ruined. It's going to be demolished. And all of a sudden, we decided to try it or taste it and said, you know what? This isn't that bad. I'm going to try it this way and start kind of mixing the ingredients to our own liking, to our own kind. So it's, I say this in a funny analogy. You know that, right? <laughs> but it's kind of the same thing. You know, that old... And I do. What? No, 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 go ahead. Finish your sentence. Sorry. It's kind of like that old ways. And, um, you know, once was, once shall be, but not forever. So definitely this is a major part of our world breaking down. You know, I don't like to get into politics, but I mean, you know, I've been, we've seen it. I'm, I'm 56. I mean, you're a little, maybe the same age as me. Actually, I think you're younger than me, but it doesn't even matter. I've seen a lot, even in my own life where I grew up and how the streets have changed and things and my family and people move on and loved ones. And I say, you know what? I can only do my best, but I know when something doesn't resonate with me and I always know deep down inside, but when you're suffocated or when you have fear, or when you have to follow, because there's always going to be rules, you know that in this world and in our lifetime, but try to um, follow them the best. But now where everything's going to be broken down and you're learning more about yourself and the world and what works for you, I just try to think and hope, yeah, is it going to be, tr I mean, this is a big, huge milestone event. I mean, wars my husband was in the military he's seen a lot my son was in the military he's seen a lot so everything changes everything and well, we just hope and pray for the best but i do well, you completely agree and that's the sound that we're coming up on our first break and we'll be back with lana louise here on the dr kevin show Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Om Times. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. 
Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4pm Pacific Time, 7pm Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. You came across someone struggling with hunger. How would you recognize them? Would you notice an eight-year-old girl who's not excited excited for for summer summer break because she may not be having lunch again until September? Or a war veteran who's having a hard time time landing a job and getting back on his feet? I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. I I am hunger in America. America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show here on Ohm Time. Remember, we are a live call-in show, and you can call in at 202-570-7057. That's 202-570-7057. Uh, and if you have any questions for myself or tonight's guest, Lynn Louise, uh, please feel free. All we ask is that your questions are or comments are respectful. Uh, so... You know, I think that one of the things that we were talking about before we took our break, Lana, was that we have, you know, there there is that clutching to what is familiar that sometimes I almost see it as people are clutching to what is familiar and known, even if it's not good for them. But it's like that stretching and the stretching ends up being like one of those circus bearers that can distort how everything looks because you so desperately don't want to let go. And yet, I think part of this is that we have instilled, especially in the Western world culture to a great deal, um, we have we have made death very fearful. and you know, death in of itself is all life is, is a series of deaths from the loss of our baby teeth to, you know, the first time our heart gets broken. I mean, to losing the first loved one. I mean, it's just death, whether it's the physical death or the death of a dream or the death of an idea or even the death of what your meaning of God was to you people that were raised in spiritually abusive religions and leave them still are going through a death. They're going through a grieving and grieving. If it was, you know, if it was embraced as a natural, healthy, supported process and wasn't something that was meant that, that, that you make people, people uncomfortable when you grieve, you, you should hide your grieving. You shouldn't grieve. You're, you know, We don't, you know, of course, you came from Italians. They did everything in big. But um, (laughs) but I'm just saying that fear makes us fear. It goes from a fear of death to a fear of loss. And so instead of getting exciting that things are changing, because as you were saying earlier, and like you've heard and I've said a million times, the only constant is change. Yeah. But these changes strike that very chord that goes back to a lot of people in the culture and our cultures, the cultures of, I'm going to call it the Western world more so than I think some other places have such a fear of death that that communicates into a fear of loss, which means holding on to something that 
no longer serves because you're so afraid of the losing that you can't get excited about, well, if I clean the shelf, what can I put in there now? If, right. if that's lost, what's going to be found? And I think this goes back to the need for spiritual development, which is one of the things we want to talk about tonight. See how I did yeah. that? <laughs> you did very nicely. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, change is huge, you know, would it be Queen Elizabeth or we'll look what we've already gone through and still going through and it continues to evolve. So a lot of people look into one, first of all, you know, people, when change happens, whether we want it or not, sometimes it's very, um, some people go with the flow, it's easy. Um, other people really um, have a push and pull with it because like you said, it's, it's not the same, it's changing, but I don't want that. And they stick their feet in their ground in the ground and they go, I'm not moving. I'm not budging. I want things the way they used to be. You know, why can't she heal or why can't he heal or whatever? But what prevents us from healing and changing is really our fear and ego. And as through personal experience myself, my sister's terminally ill right now. So for the last couple of months, few months, I've been very angry because it's been a huge change. I've been very, very angry, angry at everybody. And even with, with, without my religion base, the spirituality, thank God for that, it's still our human essence of who we are. We will feel everything. If you don't, then sometimes I get scared. I'm like, if you don't feel anything, that could be a problem. But usually, um, you know, we go into that fight or flight mode. We get nervous. We get fear. We get ego. And this is supposed to be the same. Well, how can we, I mean, would it be work? Would it be the Queen of England or United States or whatever? I mean, definitely changes. But, you know, at that time, too, even when people fear change, that's really, and I think where we're at this right now, Dr. Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, especially this month and the last couple of years, but really this month, for me, and I find the last couple of years with my clients as well and my students, um, healing is huge because things aren't the same. And like you said, some were lies, some weren't, some were fear, some were ego-based, whether they understood things or not. So spiritual development is very, very uh, important. And I've seen a big growth pattern. I'd say in the last three, really, really strong three, four years. I don't know about you. Well, I do think that, you know, what we've had is we have had a, um, the, the disillusionment got to the point that we could no longer, um, we could no longer deal with it. Right. And people were left and right being let down. They were being let down by all of the people they were supposed to trust. They were being let down by, by our political system, by our legal system. They were being let down by our justice system. They were being let down by their religions. Now, you know, all of this stuff over the last few years that has come up has made many people realize, and th this is what happens, is you're given a set of a foundational belief and you just accept it as true and you build your house on it. And then if suddenly that foundation turns out to be quicksand, if suddenly maybe you can't trust the police or maybe you can't trust your priest or your, or your minister, or you find out that horrible things have been done. And suddenly your foundation that you accepted as a child and never questioned and see, this is one of the things, and, and we're seeing a lot of people leave a lot of the big major world religions that have let them down, and for the first time in their whole life are actually questioning, and it's leading to a path of spiritual development, where they're saying, I can't trust this book. I can't trust that this book tells me God. I actually stopped and read it, and I went, oh, my God, that's who I've been praying to? Do you know some of the things that are in that book? Some of the right. things that are supposed to be okay? I can't pray to that. 
I can't get behind that. I, I can't, I can't do that anymore. Not when, you know, I am trying to kill my child who got molested by the very person who was supposed to be teaching him about God or that got, or my family member that got killed by the police that are supposed to protect us or got screwed over by the politician we elected who was going to do what was in our best interest in, in larger, more glaring ways that can't be ignored. Right. And so, right. Go ahead. No, I, so, so no matter what it is, it's everything's a relationship, right? And for me, Dr. Kevin, I'm going to be quite honest with you. People look for spiritual development. Now they say, okay, what is spiritual development? They think, you know, they sit there and go, oh, um, well, it's not all that. It's some are going to church. It's, you know, people being let down, like you said, by government doctors, this, that, and the other thing, Okay. But to me, spiritual development is who we are, is how we're connected to oneself. It is connected to God. It's connected to a higher self within your soul. So we are all responsible for ourselves. Trust is a big thing in order to trust yourself, to trust God, to hand it over. And I've said some horrible things have been done to me throughout my life. Yes, I don't need to share it here publicly. Um, And like, you know, some have been through more than others, not to gauge it less or, or more. But I just think with this great change on earth, I think a lot of people, it's not just the books and it's not just the politics. I just don't think it's just the religion, but per se religion to label but spiritual development i find the last three or four years people had especially the last couple of years were trapped in their house they couldn't go to church they couldn't even go to the market or the bank to talk to somebody they couldn't go to the doctors they were trying to set up zoom so who do you talk to yourself your higher self when you connect with yourself and you connect with God, there was a lot of lonely people on this earth. I had a lot of clients, a lot of anxiety. Um, and you know, I'm sure you've been through it like everybody else has. And even myself. And I just think spiritual development, I mean, if you really want to get to know who God is in yourself, <laughs> sit alone with yourself for a while. I think we've all been through that. And a lot of people needed that extra support, whether it be you, me, or anyone else, whoever they feel as though they're connected to. So to me, spiritual development and all this great change and everything we've been through, it's time to heal it. It is really time to heal yourself. You can't change everything. We cannot help everyone in this world. So you have to show up for yourself first. You have to trust yourself and connect with God. So spiritual development is the number one extremely important thing, I think. Well, that's my, I think my that, take. So, well, I, I saw spiritual development on the rise before the pandemic. Me I too. think the pandemic fast-forwarded it, but I think that the crumbling of the foundation set us up to start to take journeys in the time of the pandemic. And, you know, I, I've said before on my show, but I'm going to say it again uh, in this conversation, you know, I had a good solid 18 months of that pandemic where I, I was doing 38 to 42 hours of clients every week, week in and week out. I couldn't get all the people in that wanted to book with me. And I, and, but, you know, yes, there was a reach out for a great, there was a great reach out for somebody looking for answers. And in spiritual development, you can look for guides and mentors to help you discover the pathway of getting the answers for yourself. 
And I Go think ahead. some of what this, this spiritual development is, is to define what is God to you? Who is God to you? You know, I've been saying for decades now um, that, you know, I always look at souls as cells in the body of God. And so we have this body that we call God or goddess or Ale or Buddha or whatever. I don't get hooked up on the name. But all of us souls were just cells that make up different parts of the body. And then there is some part of the body that is outside of humanity that we connect with. But, you know, your cell in your left toe and your cell in your right ear are connected. They are in the body. And so that's how I look at us as the, in, being in the body of God, whatever we define it as. But I think for a long time, people never questioned how to define it. They were just handed a definition and said, I'll go with that. They never looked beyond and they trusted the wrong people. Well, we were trusted taught. people. Right. We weren't, we weren't taught to think. I mean, my father and myself, I used to do CCD classes. I mean, that's, I grew up very strict Italian, Irish, Portuguese, Catholic. And, you know, for, if you want to label it, and there's nothing, I'm still underneath the Catholic Church. I'm still Catholic. I was baptized and confirmed Catholic. And I think there's a lot of things that have changed, even in the Vatican, the Catholic religion, no, no matter what religion it is. But when, to me, who God is, is the, the, the soul in the mind connected within like you know Mavis Patel my um which passed away she was uh, one of the biggest spiritualists um in the UK from Arthur Finley she worked for Gordon with work worked with Gordon Smith she was my mentor um she was phenomenal she just passed a few weeks ago and she has a book which I have she signed it from me and it's called the droplets of God so when you say a little cell she always called it the droplets of God because we are all energy we all are love we are all peace you don't have to have three near-death experiences or something traumatic um, in order to understand but being human we will not understand that during trauma or during different events or how we were raised or different teachings or different things that we've been through. So however you want to look at it, people have been unfolding for the last, I'd say, I'd say at least since 2016. So what's that? Um, I don't know, a few years ago, several years ago. Six, I find Six years ago. You, yeah. So I find a really big push since then, if not a little bit sooner, but to me, God is connecting with oneself, connecting with everything, you know, mind, body, human experiences, we're all energy, but we are all connected to each other, and we're all part of God. That's, to me, that's who God is. You know, and so... And I, oh, and that's our next break, and we'll be very <laughs> right back with Lena Louise here on the Dr. Kevin Show. The Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Vox Novus, the new voice. Vox Novus, the new dimension. Vox Novus, thought and movement leaders who will share from their experience and offer tools to help us navigate our rapidly changing world. My name is Victor Furman. Join me every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on Own Times Radio for Vox Novus, the new voice. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. 
Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the last segment of the Dr. Kevin Show here on Home Time. Remember, this is a live call-in show. You can call in at 202-570-7057. That's 202-570-7057. Call us with your questions, your comments. We're talking about spiritual development, the nature of God, uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff that are floating through all of these conversations. You can ask any and all questions or share comments. Just remember, we just ask that they are respectful. So I want to go back to something you were saying as we were wrapping up our last segment, Lana. And, you know, one of the things is that, you know, I've often said that, you know, one of the the great discoveries that I feel a a person does on their journey through spiritual development in a lifetime, if they're, if they're here to do that journey, because not everybody's here to do that journey. Some people are here to absolutely not do that journey. And that's what their soul came in to do. And that's okay too. But they're probably not going to be listening to this radio show. So it doesn't make any difference. Um, But those people that are taking a spiritual journey, it is, you know, It's that wonderful place where we recognize, oh, we are God. Like God lives within us. We are part of God. And then where humanity consistently gets in trouble is when they decide, well, then, you know, I I have this wonderful relationship or I've decided I've got this thing that says God to me, but now everybody else has to have my God. And it precludes them having their God. And... You know, organizations and institutions, whether it is political, religious, medical, whatever it is, they at some point cross that line into the survival of the institution over the meeting of their mission. I mean, the Catholic Church was started to bring Jesus to the world And he got forgotten in that centuries ago when you look at all the things that that Catholic Church did, which had nothing to do with what Jesus taught, which is why some Christian religions say that Catholicism is not Christian, which is a lie. It was the original Christian religion. Let's 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 not fool ourselves. It's Christian. It's not your flavor of Christian. And but they evolved. But they for centuries never wanted to teach us their their people their parishioners they didn't want to teach them how to think they only ever wanted to teach them what to think they didn't want an independent questioning mind they just wanted followers and of course if you really want to go back to the teachings of jesus jesus was like i'm walking with you i'm not in front of you if anything i'm behind you helping you along supporting you to get there but i am certainly not here in front of you telling you i'm better than you are or I know more than you do. So, but I also believe that this, like I like to call it, this body of the God, goddess energy, of spirit, of universe that we all belong to, that, you know, it has, like in a human body, it's got, you know, it's got 10 fingers and 10 toes that, if your way that you find your personal relationship with God is on the pinky that's, that's Catholicism, good for you. I'm 100% support you as long as you don't tell me that that's the pinky I have to choose. Maybe I'm on the ring finger. Maybe I'm Buddhist or maybe I'm Hinduist or maybe I'm pagan. But it's that all of them lead to God because God is all of those things. God is Buddhist and Hindu and pagan. God is even atheist and agnostic. It all spins out. And the problem to me 
that that are that's driving people to spiritual development is there's not been any emphasis on creating as you talked about getting quiet and listening to that inner connected voice part of where your part of God that lives in you is connecting to that greater part of God that is connected to everything else. And that the majority of religions don't want you to have a personal relationship with God. They want you to have your relationship with the church. Right. But I think we all have our free will. So to me, um, just to kind of recap on this, what is spiritual development? For me, it's really learning oneself, learning your own soul, your inner God and your higher self. And there's different ways that people can do this. Now, mainly, whether it be trauma or whatever, or just getting these uh, aha epiphany moments, or they don't believe or lied to or whatever it may be. And it's not just in religion. Okay, uh, spiritual development is to me is learning about you, connecting and learning about oneself. Okay, no matter what job, no matter what politics or anything like that. Now, when people go that way, usually they seek to heal. They need to heal something, something that's not resonating with them, something that they don't agree to. So they have to go connect with oneself in order to connect with God. And then as their journey, as they unfold, and they never stop, we never stop unfolding along this journey. We are human. We will all feel things, mind, body, and soul completely. And there's different modalities that you can do to help yourself. So in order to have spirit development is, to get to know oneself, to find God within you. And whether it be meditations or, uh, you know, Reiki and there's different healing modalities, massage, at the end of the day, you got to come face to face with you. Because a lot of people go, oh, fix me. I want to do this. I want to do that. And they'll line you. You're more connected. I mean, I'm, I'm a Reiki practitioner as well. You know, so even I'm a hypnosis. Those are all different healing modalities, but spiritual development is really getting to know you, learning about you, you, you and your God connected to God as we connect with others. That's including animals, plants, everything. Me and you, we connect. We're all part of God. So I find through all these struggles in different times in people's lives, um, not just the last couple of years. I just think we're only human. We will seek and, and look for healing. We will seek answers. And maybe others have told them things. Or maybe they're afraid to change. I mean, I was at a huge feast this weekend, a Catholic feast. Uh, Saint, um, the Three Saints in Lawrence. That's where I grew up. I grew up extremely poor down there. They asked me to come back. I did last year and this year. Now, in the Catholic religion, they don't believe in psychic mediumship, although the Vatican did change it. But they had the utmost respect and grace for me. I did not do sessions. I just spoke to people. Because people just really need to be heard. They need, they're seeking answers. The priest was standing me. I'm looking at them. They're looking at me. So it's whatever resonates and how that person connects with their own oneself and in God themselves, different verbiage, different books, different rules. I completely understand. And then people sometimes will kind of shift them to go diff, go different healing modalities, but really spiritual development is working, connecting with yourself. There is acupuncture, there is aromatherapy, there's oils, there's meditation, there's crystals, there's hyp- hypnotherapy, meditation, sound healing, cupping, um, there's everything. But what, when people struggle and they'll look for answer, really rather than blaming someone, that's easy to do, right? What we should be asking is like, what's holding you back? 
you know, most of the time people say, oh, I can't do anything right. Oh, I got to be perfect. Oh, so-and-so told me this. Oh, I'm just a people pleaser. Um, some people like to be in control or they blame people or sometimes they're afraid. You know, um, it's really, it's about really just developing yourself. You've got to work on yourself uh, and, and using different healing modalities, but really going into you. So I hope that helped. <laughs> well, you know, I, one of the things that I work with my students on and my clients is, you know, in the in in the in my book, Combing the Mirror and Other Steps in Your Spiritual Path, I describe the spiritual path as a cobblestone path, and no two paths are ever meant to be identical because we are each unique beings. And in that cobblestone path, you might have a cobblestone that's very large, that's Catholicism, but that doesn't preclude you having a small one that says pagan on it, or one that says Hindu on it. It doesn't, that it is, first of all, understanding no one has your path for you. Everyone that you interact may have a cobblestone in your path, but it is still your path and it is your living of it that is like the cement that holds those cobblestones together and so you know as as you experience things you're drawn to you're going to take a little or a lot but a lot of times i feel like people's self-worth self-esteem their value has been so destroyed especially since the 50s um uh, through media and Elvis. things like this. Shame, shame on Elvis swinging his hips. I just heard that one the other day. She's like, oh, I love Elvis. And she's like, I could never play this music, you know. I was, my family was totally against it. They got in a lot of trouble because back then that's, that was no good, you know. Yeah. Well, when I look at the 50s and talk about it destroying our self-worth and self-value, it's more about Madison Avenue deciding to give America all sorts of problems that then they could sell the solutions to. You know, your hair isn't right. You're too big. You're too fat. You're too skinny. You're too big chested. You're too flat chested. Here, here's your solution. Use Brill Cream. Use this. Use that. You need this. You need that. And then in the 60s and 70s, we changed it from basically making everybody in America feel like they were ugly and they needed to spend hundreds of dollars on something to look better because no one was going to love them because they were ugly, however they looked. Yeah, but that's then trend. Started... And everybody's got their free will. Come on, Dr. Kevin. Everybody has their free, free will. Times have but changed. We... Closing change. Politics. Everything changes. You go with the flow. You choose to do what... I mean, that's being a follower. That's being a follower. Oh, oh I got to get this. I get, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. But if you're telling me that you're not finding people that are coming to you and one of their first problems they have to overcome is self-worth and self-value issues, that's coming from media giving them those issues. Cause no, they're a lot of my clients, I deal, with them. no, a lot of my clients, it, it's, it has nothing to do with media and their hair gel and all that. A lot of my clients, um, it stems from ancestors. Um, sometimes I do a hypnosis session on them, work back, do a regression, and see where it stems from. It could be mom, dad, or it could be from, you know, ancestors, your roots, where it's, you know, kind of passed down. People are like, oh, my grandmother passed me on her gifts. No, she didn't pass them on to you. Everybody has gifts. It, don't, don't tell me, you know, because everybody's psychic, everybody's intuitive. I believe that. Um, and people are like, oh, my great grandmother had these gifts. No, a gift to me is you put it in a box and put a bow on it. It's just everybody has these abilities. So I mean, would it be psychic medium? But would you even, even? But ahead. would you? But but would you challenge the fact that if you're born of a skin, uh, of a family that DNA naturally creates them long, lean, and they build muscle like nobody's business, 
that that is part of the environment they shaped them, the body they went in. And that DNA is from your ancestors. Right. And there are things that we get from our ancestors that some people are more inherently compassionate or empathic. Everybody has psychic abilities. But some people, like some people can sit down like Mozart and play the piano at five like a brilliant genius. And some people can run a 30 second mile before they hit puberty. And some people have a lot of access to their psychic gifts and some people have a lot of struggle to get there. And that does come down through the lineage. So. We all have to come back. We got so many more conversations to have, Lana. I know. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Next week, we're going to have Rob Stewart from InnerCenter.org, uh, and we'll be doing our planetary influences here on the Dr. Kevin Show.